Hi everyone, Amy Love here, and I am here today to share with you a somewhat embarrassing situation, but I'm sure that most of you can relate. Uh, this beautiful box right here was made by my friend Mary, who's Mary the Craft Hoarder here on YouTube. Thanks Mary, I love it, it's beautiful. And I have been using it for like a jewelry box for the past, I don't know, few years. And it sits right here on my little table next to my bed. And well, the, the issue I'm having <laughs> is the box is beautiful, but um, my necklaces get tangled up in here and digging through here every morning before work to find earrings is not something I wanna do anymore. So about a month ago, I started looking at uh, online for different you know, options for organizing your jewelry. For me, in our little cabin life, it would just be easier if I had it out in the open where I could easily access it. I don't really have room for a standing jewelry box and I really don't want another jewelry box uh, to dig through. I'm gonna keep this one though because I'm gonna keep my uh, rings and bracelets in here. And a shout out to Angie from Angel, uh, from Angie from Mountain Girl Studios. Thank you, sweetie. <laughs> She gave me this bracelet one year and I absolutely love it. So I'm gonna keep my bracelets and rings probably still in Mary's little box that I love. But um, I had a couple things in my cart in Etsy that I was him and hawing about and I found myself unexpectedly with the day off today. Nice surprise, I love when that happens. And I thought, you know what, instead of spending the money, let me dig through my hoard of supplies and see if I can just come up with something on my own. And so I did that. So for my earrings, like I don't have a whole lot of earrings. This is all the earrings that I have. So I made this to display them and I still have room for more. Should I buy some of that is my baby girl or not those not the best earrings ever. She gave them to me for Mother's Day several years ago. I flippin love them. And she also made these, she's starting to make pottery and she made these for me for Christmas. Love. Okay, so I made that and I did do a tutorial. I'm gonna show you how I did it, it was so easy. And of course, if you have more earrings, you could make a bigger one, but you know, that's, that would do it for me. And then I'm gonna try to scroll over. Hey! Over here, I made this for my um, necklaces. And I just really love it. So um, it works great, right? This was actually a gift from a student when I was teaching that I love so much. This is a kunzite stone for heart healing. And this pretty little bracelet, since this is kind of like got just the chain, I hung it up here too. This pretty little bracelet was um, gifted to me by Siobhan, who is a pearl and button here on YouTube. Thank you so much, I love it, it's beautiful. So this is what I came up to hang my necklaces from and I love it so I just have both of these things on either side of my mirror um, in my little corner of the bedroom and I just think they're so pretty so I did a tutorial on how I made them so let me show you so after digging through all of my things I decided I would use the frame of a canvas for my earrings so this canvas that I'm using is nine by three because I don't have that many earrings, this will suit me fine. I also don't have a lot of space to put the earrings, so I needed something small. But you can just use whatever size canvas you need for the earrings that you have. And you can get canvases pretty inexpensively at Walmart and Hobby Lobby. Um, obviously, you're going to buy a cheap canvas. You don't want to tear apart a good canvas. But you can get your hands on some cheap canvases, and this is the perfect project for the frame. So the trickiest part of this is getting off the staples, but uh, my Timmy Snips worked like a champ, and I will link below to some Timmy Snips if you don't have any in your life, you need some. I love mine, and that is how I got the staples um, off. But as you can see, it did take some effort. <laughs> but I managed to get all the staples out uh, using a small flathead uh, tiny screwdriver and my Timmy Snips. So after you get all of the staples out, you are going to want to remove the actual canvas. And I'm going to save the canvas because I'm sure I can use it for something later. And all I need though for this project is the wooden frame. 
So what I'm going to do with the frame is I'm going to paint it because I am going to cover it with lace so you will be able to see the frame through it. So um, I was thinking lace would be really pretty, but I want the frame to be white. So I'm just using this um, white paint to do that. And I'm just going to squirt it right on the wood. I mean, it just doesn't have to be fancy. And I'm only going to give it one coat because I am going to cover it with the lace so you really won't see any fine details <clears throat> from my quick paint job. But I like the fact that the white is coming through the lace instead of the wood. But you could just leave it if you wanted to. So now you get to decide what you are going to put, um, you know, what kind of fabric you want to use. You could use fabric, you could use burlap. I'm using lace, but if you choose to use lace, it really needs to be like a sturdier lace. I wouldn't use vintage lace or, or really soft lace or lace that would tear easily because you are going to be poking holes in it with your earrings. So you want something that's going to hold up. So I had this wide uh, lace. It's pretty sturdy. Um, in my stash and I tea dyed it and I decided to use it. So I'm using my spatula so I don't burn myself. Um, I believe I got that at Hobby Lobby. No, I'm sorry, at the Dollar Tree. And what you want to do, the most important thing that you want to do here is make sure that you are pulling your lace or fabric tight. You want it to be tight, tightly stretched across the frame. And so you're just going to get all the ends. You're not going to worry about the extra hanging off because we're just going to cut that off. So no biggie. But yes, make sure you pull tight on the ends too. So you're just hot gluing it all the way around and just making sure that it is pulled tight. And using something beside your fingers so you do not burn yourself. All right, so I'm gonna just cut the extra off. Um, I obviously need to invest in some better scissors, but um, these are the scissors I grabbed, so I'm kind of just having to hack and saw away at it. And uh, I just trim it all the way down to the frame because I am gonna add an edging trim, which is gonna help hold that lace tight and help to keep it glued down. I decided to add some snippets of appliques to mine. You could have just, you know, not decorated at all. I think it was very pretty just the way it was, but you could add appliques or flowers or anything you want. Just make sure you don't cover up the middle section where you'll be putting the earrings. So you just want to decorate along the edges if you choose to decorate at all. It's easier to see the gap with the lace, but if you used fabric, you're just going to want to make sure you don't cover that middle space. But it looks so pretty. Absolutely love it. So now I am going to use a trim to cover up the edge of the uh, canvas and that is going to help the lace stay put and it gives it a nice finished look. So I'm just going to um, hot glue that around. I start at the bottom so that uh, the where the seams meet is much less noticeable. So I just like the way that looks. And I just, I really enjoyed how this turned out and it's been coming in so handy already because I have all my earrings just hanging on the wall. And this is so lightweight, I can just take it off, take my earrings off and just put it back. And yes, it's working out rather nicely. But you know, I, I should have probably just left it with the lace and not all of the, um, over embellishing since I'm hanging it in my bedroom that I share with my husband but I I just I can't even help myself so <laughs> over embellishing is what I do that's just how it goes so there it is finished so pretty I didn't finish the back because it's just gonna be hanging on my wall so nobody's gonna see that but me and I don't mind 
So I love how it turned out. So for the necklace organizer, I chose to use an embroidery hoop. It is an eight inch embroidery hoop. And I am just gonna use uh, some white paint to paint around the outside of the outer uh, hoop and the front edge. And then I will paint the inside of the inner hoop and the outside edge of that. Um, I am going to use lace again so you will be able to see the wooden hoop on the inside and I'm not going to cover up this outside hoop so I decided since I have wood walls I mean I could I would have left it wood because I don't mind the way that looks but since I have wood walls it's just it's, it gets to be too much so um, I decided to go with the white paint. All right, now this is the interesting part of this particular project. Um, I found these in my stash. They're little um, eye, what are they called? Eye screws, I think is what they're called. And I decided to use them instead of actual hooks because I tend to be accident prone. I didn't want like open-ended uh, <laughs> sharp pointy things coming out of that hoop at me. So <laughs> I used these so I wouldn't have that problem. And I just don't screw them all the way in. I leave just a little bit of um, an edge there for like the, the chains to nestle into. And so I am gonna use the, uh, the tightening screw for the hoop as the top of this and I will cover it with something. But um, measuring from that, I'm going an inch and a half over each way, and then I'm gonna put the rest of the hooks an inch and a half apart. So uh, the first, well, they're not hooks, but the first screw went in rather, rather easily for me. The rest were not. It was a challenge to get these little suckers in here, and the wood started to split, but it, it works out in the end because it didn't break it. It just split it, but I didn't care. It's for my personal use. It's fine. No problem. But it was a bit of a challenge. So I don't show you how I put them all in because it just, what you see is what I did several, several times over and over again <laughs> until my fingers hurt. So what I go ahead and do is I go ahead and mark um, where I want to put them all and I used this beautiful little pokey tool that I got uh, from Shelly her, at her Etsy shop. And I go ahead and mark uh, everywhere that I want to put a screw just so I know, you know where they're all going. And then off camera, I fight with getting the screws in. So <laughs> it is a bit of a challenge if you decide to go that route. I just want you to know. I mean, it's worth it to me in the end, but it was a little... Uh, more challenging than I actually thought it would be. And I'm pushing the pokey tool in to give my screw a start <clears throat> in the hoop. And I put my ruler in the paint because, <laughs> because that's just how I roll, which is why I didn't want pointy things coming off of this hoop. So there you go. But there you can see um, where I've marked the holes and I'm gonna put screws and the screws in and there they are magically. They're good. So I'm gonna add lace to this and it's actually lace from my aunt's uh, wedding dress. So it is vintage lace, which is fine because I'm not gonna be poking holes in it or tearing at it. It's just gonna decorate the middle of my hoop. So now I'm just starting the fun process of uh, tightening, tightening the outer hoop around the lace and then pulling the lace through and then tightening the hoop some more and pulling the lace through. I just want to make sure that the lace is good and tight before I cut the uh, excess lace off, which I will be doing and I will be keeping every scrap of that. I will not waste any of my aunt's wedding dress, I promise. But it takes a minute. It's a process of tightening and pulling to get it very, very tight through there. And I'm gonna cut it right up to the hoop, but we are gonna cover it 
with a trim like we did on the canvas to help hold that lace there. So this is what I'm doing. I'm just gluing this trim on the back and that is going to give it a finished look and it is also going to help that lace stay where it is so it doesn't come out of the hoop. Now I could just stop right there. It's very pretty the way it is, but you know, I've got to over embellish it like I do everything else. So I'm using some beautiful appliques that I had and I am going to glue these down since I'm not going to be poking anything through the hoop. The appliques won't be in the way. Um, but it was pretty just the way it was. And I, t you know, someday I might learn how to um, not over embellish, but yeah, that's not really my style. So I'm going to hot glue this on, but I am going to be careful not to push down too hard um, on that lace because I don't want it to start sagging or start to come loose. So I've kind of hold it up from the bottom and then tap it down on the top just to avoid, you know, pushing down too hard because I don't want to, I don't want to ruin it. I love it. So now I'm just going to cover up the uh, tightening screw with this pretty little uh, pearl bow that I had and then it is ready to go. So I've got some pictures coming up to show you the um, what they look like and I love them. So I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and please leave me a comment and let me know what you think and give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, please um, click that subscribe button and I will be back soon with some more um, crafty creations. Thanks, everybody.